helping to provide a little bit more insight into China's economic recovery is Wang Dan. She's the chief economist at Hang Seng Bank. Thanks so much for your time. Now, a fairly good start to the year. Were you surprised by these latest numbers? Uh, I was surprised, just like everybody else, on the upside, um, because it looked like that a lot of export companies had difficulties in securing new orders. And domestic consumption, despite being a quite uptick from last year, people's income growth had permanently slowed. And housing transaction also turned positive in the last week of March. But for the whole first quarter, the housing transactions were relatively tame, comparing to the pre-pandemic level. So given the momentum in the macro figure now, we probably will not only see the 5% of growth target being reached this year, it's very likely to reach close to 6%. So what were the main sort of, you know, drivers, the momentum behind this thing? You mentioned the, um, the real estate market there, but what about tourism, uh, you know, local economies, that sort of thing? Was spending up? Oh, for sure, um, because last year, due to lockdown, a lot of the business travels and personal leisure travels were not able to be made. So this year, there were strong recovery demand uh, in that front. And ever since uh, the tr traditional Chinese New Year, we have seen a lot more people going out and about, uh, not just the foresight seeing, but also to get new business opportunities. And that's why the index for traffic, uh, transportation, tourism, and catering were all up very significantly. Uh, what's not so good in the retail data was actually car sales. And this kind of durable goods are closely linked to income growth, and it has been relatively weak. Now, of course, this year has been a year of recovery for China, um, but it's a year of almost a recession coming to the US and a very slow growth year for Europe. With external markets deteriorating, how can China sort of really stay buoyant in, in the months and the year to come? Actually, the trade data was the biggest surprise of all the macro figures this month. Um, and the export actually was very strong to all the markets, especially to ASEAN. But throughout the year, we do notice this concern that this boom in export may not be sustainable, precisely because of the potential economic slowdown in the U.S. and Europe. Uh, anyway, the export from China to the U.S. account for about 15 percent of China's total export. And we don't see any signs the Federal Reserve really reverse its monetary stance. So given more constraints in terms of financing costs and more headwinds in the developed markets, we might see a significant slowdown of China's exports as a result. Uh, will be Beijing boost stimulus spending, do you think, especially to try and chase that 5% growth target? Uh, there is no need. And just by a natural rebound of consumption and a relatively warming up of the housing market, um, we probably would already have exceeded a 5% growth target. And this year, one big risk is actually linked to uh, the local government debt. Uh, we have seen that for a lot of the local governments in central and western China, they have a hard time of securing more tax income due to the economic difficulties. And housing sales are also not relatively tame, and that have affected the land sales, which was a big revenue for the local fiscal, uh, fiscal book. So in the coming month, it's going to be a big challenge for the central government. Now, of course, unemployment is an integral part of the economy and figures are at a record low at the moment. What needs to change to sort of boost more opportunities for workers in China? Well, when we look at the details of unemployment figures, it's actually that young people's unemployment is a big problem, especially the university graduates. And we have seen that all levels of government and state-owned enterprises have already tried to expand uh, their employment for the students graduated this year. And there are a lot of efforts also from the large leading um, IT companies like JD.com or Alibaba trying to recruit more. But maybe we will need more training programs targeting the low-skill workers, especially those from the construction and manufacturing industries, because those two are probably under the big pressure of in contraction this year. All right. Wang Dan, Chief Economist at Hang Seng Bank. Thank you.